have said we're rapidly approaching a crisis that will be worse than 2008. Explain. Well, Maria, the debts in this country are skyrocketing. It, you know, in the last three years, the government has spent staggering amounts of money, and the Federal Reserve is taking on staggering amounts of debt. When the problems arise next time, and we've had recessions every four to six years from the beginning of time, the next time we have a recession, what are they going to do? They can't quadruple the debt again. They cannot print that much more money. So we're going to, it's going to be worse the next time around. I don't particularly like saying that. I'm a like you. I'm an American taxpayer. But cut I think, to face I think facts. It's fascinating that we're having this unprecedented conversation about raising the debt ceiling. Let me ask you, what kind of a market disruption would you expect a market disruption? if, in fact, we were to see this play out all the way until August or September? Well, if they closed down the government, I suspect the dollar would go up because then people would realize they're not going to spend any money. They're not going to close down the government, though. I would hope that somebody down there would understand we are facing a crisis. The debts are staggering. We can never pay off these debts. We've got to do something. The market's not going to put up with this much longer. What should they do? They should cut spending in a draconian matter. They should cut taxes and they should cut spending to the bone. We've got troops in 150 countries around the world. They're not doing us any good. They're making enemies. That's costing us a fortune. There are many, many other things that we're wasting money on, and that should be stopped. You said that the U.S. dollar is going to be a total disaster. Where is U.S. policy going wrong? And you said the Chinese yuan is going to be a safe currency. Talk to us about that. We're printing a lot of, we have been printing staggering amounts of money, and we're the largest debtor nation. We're the largest debtor nation in the history of the world, Maria, in the history of the world. And the debts are going through the roof. Would you keep lending money to somebody who's spending money and not doing anything about it? No, you wouldn't. The pound sterling it used to be the world's reserve currency. It's lost its status. It went down 90% from top to bottom when it lost its status. I don't like saying it, but we will too. Are you short the dollar? I own the dollar right now, but the reason I own the dollar is because there's so many bears, including me. I stepped in for a bounce, a rally. If it doesn't happen, I'll have to sell and take my losses. No, I'm sitting here long, but just for a rally, not for any long time. Let me ask you about emerging markets. Everybody's worried about China. How slow is things getting? Are things getting there? Well, the Chinese are trying to cool their economy off, rightly so. They've raised interest rates four times. They've raised reserve requirements seven times. They've got an inflation problem. They've got a housing bubble. They're trying to do something about it, rightly so. I hope they pull it off, but it's going to affect their economy. It's going to affect anybody who does business with China. So ripple effects, iron ore, copper. Talk to us about commodities. Well, the ripple effects of a slowdown in China. Well, obviously, if you sell to China, whoever you are, it's going to have an effect when they, when they slow down. But remember, when you talk about commodities, it's supply and demand. Supply is under duress. You know, in this country, for instance, the average age of a farmer is 58 years old, Maria. We've got huge agricultural problems facing us, not just us, the whole world. In 10 years, if they're still alive, they'll be 68. They're not going to be producing a lot of food in 10 years or even five years. So the world's got serious supply problems as well as potential demand problems. Doesn't that make a case of bull?